Are you a high school athlete? Want to build some muscle? Watch this. Our first caller is Brian from Pennsylvania. Brian, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, how you guys doing today? Good, good. Good, good man. Good. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm looking for advice on a topic that's related to uh, when you guys talk about the lifting program that Justin developed for his football team. Oh, right. Okay. So just to kind of give you some background, I'm a high school baseball coach. Our season ended about two weeks ago. And then this is the second season that they've asked me to develop the off-season lifting program for the team. Um, last year, I was able to come up with a plan. We had about two months uh, for the uh, players to come in and lift. They came in about two times a week for about two hours. Uh, so I really focused on total body workouts. One of the workouts was focused primarily with barbell, and the other one was focused primarily with dumbbells. And they were both total body workouts. And every few weeks, I tried to progress the reps, like five to eight range, and then a couple of weeks would go by eight to 12, and then 12 to 15. This year is a little bit different. Um, we're looking at uh, developing the lower body strength of our uh, players as well as our core strength. Uh, we have a lot of younger guys on the team this year. Um, they're about maybe 100 to 150 pounds, and that's being a little generous on that end. Um, and, and we're just trying to get as much as we can out of these guys. We're going to try to do it for three months this year and, and maybe bump it up to three times a week. Um, so I'm just looking for advice on how to possibly program um, this, uh, you know, these lifting sessions for these athletes to get the most out of the time that they're there. What, if you don't mind me asking, what, um, what do you would say is like their biggest weakness right now in terms of like what you notice in their uh, abilities in uh, their were they prone to injury? Like, or, or what, what was the season like and where are they at in terms of like what type of athletes they are? Right. So last year we had an older team. Um, a lot of the guys kind of knew their way around the weight room. Um, there was a little bit of teaching of some like of the form and mechanics. And I have a little background in training, so I was able to help with that. Those guys have since graduated. There was no injury problems that we had. Um, but the guys that we have now are on the smaller side. They're, they're young, a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores, uh, looking to get more overall power, like, you know, pop off the bat, uh, arm strength. Um, and like I said, some explosiveness from the legs and also from the core, you know, with a lot of the swing mechanics comes from those areas of the body. So uh, they're just, they're younger guys and they're not very big and they're not very heavy. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at moving into uh, next season. Yeah, no, I just asked because I didn't know if like you needed to spend a lot of time with um, just figuring out <clears throat> how to get them to move better in general and, and be able to organize their body appropriately. Uh, if, if really if it's strength and if it's power that you're going with, um, I see I see our mass performance program as being a perfect uh, sort of a complimentary uh, program for this, especially if you're going to move towards like a three day a week, you know, foundational lifts. And then are you doing like skills training in between or uh, anything like that? So we're going to do some skills training here towards the end of the summer. But when we hit the fall, we're going to be focused primarily on, on the weight room. Um, I think there would be some uh, benefit in doing some like of the mobility type things and some, especially like the flexibility for like shoulders you know, like I said, with throwing, um, that's an important part, you know, uh, but when it hits the fall, we're going to be looking primarily at doing um, lifting and not so much, you know, uh, fundamentals of baseball. That'll pick up in the winter as we lead into the spring. Yeah, I like, I mean, I like all those ideas. I, I definitely like building that base of strength uh, first. So that's like something like, and I know you switched up kind of the rep scheme like every two weeks or so. Like in our programs, we tend to stick around at least three to four weeks um, and really establish a good mechanics with that and also get them familiar with that so they can build strength uh, and then start to shift the focus on, you know, hypertrophy and then more of like functional training. So I try to kind of time it all up so that way um, a lot of the, uh, the the functional training and then the, um, the conditioning kind of leads back into the season. Um, so in... And sort of, and mass performance is kind of a microcosm of that. So depending on how long you know you're structuring this, um, I added I added a bit of our maps anabolic kind of program concepts uh, with my kids when we were training for football specifically because there was a big lack of strength and just okay. that base of strength was non-existent. So 
Um, you know, I spent, you know, uh, quite a bit of extra time on those compound lifts and really like reiterating like the, the, the top five to seven, you know, compound lifts that will really get them a good base of strength. And then now we've shifted into more of our <clears throat> multi-planar type of exercises and I'm really incorporating more functional work. Uh, obviously with baseball players, like rotational work is a huge component to that. So if you can, if you can make sure you program that, obviously, uh, you know, in more of the functional training side of it, uh, you know, this is where I like to, especially with baseball players, I don't know how familiar you are with like Indian clubs or anything. I've always wanted to experiment, uh, you know, incorporating that into that, um, that, that type of an athlete, just because it's so valuable in terms of, uh, you know, really bulletproofing the shoulder and getting that uh, loaded uh, rotation uh, movement throughout uh, their shoulders and, and to really try to kind of, uh, you know, build that strength support and that stability around the shoulders. Because that's, I mean, between shoulders, between, you know, hips and, and, and knees and ankles and everything else, um, if you just make sure you're, you're considering all that in your programming with priming them ahead of time. Obviously, like I, I took some of the, the compass tests, so it's really basic to do uh, before we even start any of our workouts. And we just had them doing wall presses. I had them doing like shoulder circles, which is a good one, kneeling circles, uh, especially with baseball players would be great. Um, and then, um, you know, <clears throat> timing it. So I, I would shift probably, um, well, back to the priming. So then, uh, basically that and our squats, uh, that we would do with our, our stick and then also our, um, uh, windmill test with that too. So those are like the three, the main ones that I would have them working on. So that way we get, uh, we hit all the points, um, appropriately in terms of like, you know, getting everything warm, warmed up, activated and everything for the workouts. Brian, did you happen to listen to the episode that Joe DeFranco interviewed Justin just recently? I, I'm not sure. I listen to a lot of them, but I, I can't remember that one in particular. So it's not on our platform. It's actually Joe, okay. DeFran Joe DeFranco. And if I, if you're not familiar yeah, with no. Joe DeFranco, you absolutely should dive into his stuff because much of the stuff that we've, yeah. we've built on related to sports performance comes from Joe DeFranco. So he's like one of the OGs in the space. Okay. Uh, he just recently did a great interview of Justin and they basically talked all about his experience coaching young mm -hmm. athletes at the high school level. And they both were just going back and forth with all their years of experience and sharing some of the challenges with groups, with guys being stronger, weaker, and some of the things that they've implemented, everything from challenges to what exercises they would eliminate, what exercises Risk they- Risk versus reward, like, yeah. yeah, all those things. Yeah. And I did went in a lot more detail there. I think it's like, it's a fire hose right now. Like, if I was to, like, shoot off the exact program I'd write for you, I'd have to sit down for a while and really kind of draw it up, but- <laughs> Um, I, I think that that's a great episode to listen yeah, to. One of the sure. challenges with, with young athletes like that is uh, you have some exercises that are very valuable, but there's a long period of time where you have to learn how to do the exercise properly before you can really derive lots of benefit. So some exercises that you can do now that a lot of your athletes might be able to, within a week or two, perform properly. Like Rather than doing, like for example, a traditional deadlift, you can use a trap bar. Much, much lower skill. Still lots of carryover. Um, sled work. Most people can push a sled, a heavy sled. Doesn't require as much skill as like a barbell squat. Split stance exercises like walk, walking lunges, less skill than let's say a barbell squat, for example. So those might, you know, those may be the exercises you focus on just because you only have a few months and mm -hmm. it may take right. two months just to get your freshman to be able to perform a barbell squat properly. And then you have three weeks left to build strength on it. Whereas you could be doing like walking lunges or... Uh, sled and you could start to progress them with strength, you know, after the first week or so. So I, I love, uh, I love landmine stuff too. I don't know if you guys have access to a landmine or not, but for baseball players, the rotational strength, anti-rotation benefits that you get, uh, from a landmine and, and it's pretty easy to, to teach, uh, in comparison to some like a, a snatch or a power clean yeah. or something like that. So, and, and, uh, you know, three days a week is great. Here's the other side of it though, by the way, you, you mentioned how small the guys were and you want to increase, increase strength. They got to eat more. Yeah. You got to really focus on getting them to eat more. And, uh, with kids, it can be really tough. One of my, I've always had a lot of success with, uh, helping them make shakes. Mm -hmm. So like, here's a protein powder. Uh, put it with some whole milk, add some peanut butter and some strawberries, and I want you all to drink this twice a day, you know, or something like that, right? That really, really helps with the calories. But don't eat less. Just add these shakes on top of, you know, what you're currently doing. That could help. Um, Magic Spoon Cereal, okay? It's a company we work with. Kids 
love that. J- Justin for a while there was using them yeah. as giveaways uh, when they when the kids would do something you know great. He would use a bottle, and they would all clamor for it. And it's okay. Why they all like cereal? But it's a high protein cereal, so it gives them you know whey protein and yeah, you know, good advice. I don't know any teenage boys that doesn't, don't like to eat cereal th- you know three times a day, right? So um, I would I would be shakes and foods like that, and I'd say because you're dealing with a hundred pound kid. They're going to build strength. Like you want to, I mean, look, and I tell you what, at that age, you know, in a three month period, you could add 10 pounds of good muscle in a three, in a three month period, but it's got to come, it's got to come from calories. It's got to come from calories and strength training. If they don't eat that food, they'll get stronger, but the muscle's not going to come on. That's such such an excellent point. Getting good at a couple good core lifts and making sure they're eating properly, putting on, I mean, that that's the majority of what, yeah, you're going to receive in terms of like their progress. Yeah. And that's. That's really been what we've been trying to work on the most is just mastering um, the the ones that move the needle the most. And so those five to seven core lifts, um, getting them really proficient in that, um, focusing on eating and then recovery. And so in between in the days, we do skills, but also we do more mobil- mo- mobility focused type days. And this is also why I mentioned like mass reforms because we structured that in there. Uh, so it does hit all those all those joints nicely and it also gets that um, multiplanar movement started so that way you know they're able to um, react and respond and have that kind of uh, stability uh, that's going to help them even perform better on top of this new strength and this new weight that they're hopefully going to gain some weight out of this as well yeah but you know you can literally write up like a a, a recipe you know a muscle, a mass gaining recipe shake recipe you have a vegan option a non-vegan option hand them to the kids all right guys over the next three months i want all of you to have two of these a day on top of your meals and you're gonna pack on some muscle. It's got to be very simple when you're dealing. Is that with, a popular thing? Kids. Vegan pop, vegan baseball high school players. <laughs> you know what? I, we're, it's 2022. Tell me you don't. Go, tell, me you, tell me you don't have a bunch it's of tw- vegan baseball players. It's 2022. <laughs> like I, I'm just trying to cover all the bases here. You know what I mean? No pun intended. So. We're lucky if they don't show up beating Wendy's or something like that. Uh, yeah. so, you know. Exactly. <laughs> but you never know. You get some kid. Oh, I can't have milk. And you know? all right, that's fine. So, but yeah, you give them you give them a recipe here. Have this twice a day, guys. This is part of your you know this is your deal. And then stay on top of it. Do you have your shakes? And then, you know, like, you know, four exercises, three days a week, you got it covered. Low skill ones though. I, I want to stress that because right. when I've okay. trained 14, 15, 16 year olds, it's like, you know, and if I had them for a long time, I would spend uh, a ju- long time did, teaching them. Just, Justin and Joe cover that in the episode really well. In fact, we haven't even touched on it. They, something that they, they did a lot of that you should incorporate is isometrics. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially, okay. especially when you're training in a group setting, right? You got 10, 15, 20 guys at mm-hmm. once. You know, uh, yeah. Joe and him were talking about how, like, Joe DeFranco claims that his favorite exercise is like a static lunge, mm-hmm. just putting them all in a lunge position. Then that way it allows you as a coach to walk around and adju- right. address posture, address knee, address, yeah. like, and, it, and just, and then he says you get a lot of great strength carryover just from isometric holds with their body weight. And so, um, yeah, they talk a little, make sure you listen to that episode. Yeah. I think it's a very valuable episode on the, the things, the pitfalls that they talk about. And I mean, I learned a lot listening and I've been hanging out with Justin for almost 15 years and still learn something from that episode. Yeah. We went in a lot better depth there. Yeah. This yeah. is kind of like a snippet. So yeah. if you don't have mass performance, we'll send that to you. Okay, Brian. Okay, great. And you said something about the priming movements before the workout. I think that's really important because their warm ups are not the best. Yeah. So I think that would help. I, I didn't know if there was like anything uh, specific that, you know, I could just, like you said, just a few of them to get like, you know, them used to doing it, mm-hmm. not overloading them with too much information, but just yeah. a few key I, ones to hit on. I think those, um, and, and you could do this right away by just going on our, uh, the, the free webinars that okay. Adam and I both did, but uh, the one specifically that I did, um, is our compass test. And so they're very basic. So it's just right. You can, you can do this with the whole team and have them up against a wall and they do okay. the wall press first and you can kind of walk around and see, uh, where everybody's at in terms of like yeah. their ability. Can, can they touch their elbows all the way to the wall while also, you know, drawing in their stomach and not having this crazy rib flare. Um, you can look at all these things that are happening in terms of, uh, imbalances and, and dysfunction. So, um, that's a good one to do with the whole team. And then, uh, the, the windmill and then also the squat test as well. And like I'll do the squat test and I'll have them sit down in that squat and just see where I'm at. Like, cause a lot of kids will, you know, raise their, their, their heels, like their bodies, like they can't even maintain that position. And, you know, it, it, it also allows you by like what Adam was saying in terms of the isometric part of it, like I just slow things down the cadence a lot uh, in the beginning so I can walk around and I can kind of like just little cues and, and just uh, some, some physical feedback to kind of show them where they should be 
Uh, and then also when they keep practicing this before the workouts, they get better at it and it, it just puts them in better posture and it gets their muscles firing a bit, a bit more effectively that way. Yeah. So it's maps, primewebinar.com. Okay. And you'll learn that there. Excellent. Thank right, you. Man. Thanks for calling cool. in. Appreciate yeah, it. Thanks a lot. I appreciate all your help. Thank you. Yeah. Good you luck, man. man. Thanks. Yeah, I wanted to emphasize the the calories thing because I don't know you you work with like teenage kids. No, it's such Boys, a it's they such, just skip it's such, breakfast. No, they, it's such a great yeah. point because they could be they could be doing all of these lifts trying to el- build some muscle and strength, but if they're under eating calories, under eating protein, <laughs> you're going to get very little from it. Maybe, maybe yep. they'll adapt to the skill set of the exercise, but they're not going to build good muscle strength no. and power from that. So it's such a good. There point. was a program that was going around online that. All these kids, these teenage boys were like, oh my God, this works so well. It was called Go Mad. Have you guys heard of this? Go Mad. Gallon of milk a day. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why they gained so much size doing that. It was because it literally told people drink a gallon of whole milk yeah. every single day. You, know, you take a bunch of kids like this and you just you throw some calories at them and have them lift. As long as they don't hurt themselves, yeah. it's like prime. They're prime to build muscle. 